today we are going to be creating a deformed cloth in Maya or you can call it as a morphing cloth and it was a bit challenging because uh, the way we wanted to create this was we wanted to create wrinkles on a plane at the same time we, we didn't want it the overall plane to move around as much as we want so we'll see how we can do that we'll use a couple of constraints and to get that kind of effect so let's go to the poly modeling and let's create our first cloth and this will be my plane and this will be my cloth so i'm going to make the division to about 40 and 40 and uh, you know about cloth the more subdivisions you have the more better result you are going to get at the cost of render time and catching time so make sure you're keeping the overall subdivision as low as possible when you're previewing this or doing a trial and error and then you can increase it at the final render so i think the overall 80 subdivision is good enough for the viewing purpose so i'm going to go to my outline and let's call this cloth and let's change the modeling menu to fx menu and let's create a cloth now if i play this down you'll see something like this the cloth falls as usual so i'm going to go to my nucleus here you can also go to your outliner nucleus and you can get rid of the gravity here so i'm going to make the gravity to zero and that will just make the plane not fall off because we don't have anything to pull that cloth down so that solves one problem so the next thing we are going to do is select our plane here and go to end constraint and we are going to select a constraint called as force field so we have already talked about all the constraint there is to end cloth in the earlier videos so we pretty much know what force field does and if i play this now you will see something like this wavy thing going on so the first thing i'm going to do is increase the overall scale of this as big enough so it fits the overall plane here so i think 13 should be enough and now we have something like this now if i play this again as you can see we get something like this so right now the overall constraint is working perfectly as it's supposed to be let me just select this and let's move this up just a bit but the one thing that we wanted was the plane should not leave its place so what we are going to do is we are going to fix that in the constraint you get a couple of options like strength glue bend force and motion drag and so on so the motion drag is kind of you can treat it as a resistance so the more resistance we add towards the motion drag the motion drag will try to keep the plane in the same place as long as possible so i'm going to make the value to one and we'll see all right so we get something but not as much as possible so if i make this zero you'll see the difference before it was this and after hitting the value of one we get some resistance so the motion drag is acting but the value is not strong enough to hold it as long as possible so i'm going to make the value to two so if i play this now you can see some flickering going on and you can see the overall plane is on the same place right now so we have started to create some wrinkles in the middle and what we want is some deformation going on so what we are going to do is increase the drop off distance to two and you can treat drop off as a kind of a radial drop off and we have worked with mash and you probably know about the fall off and drop off but if you don't uh, let me just demonstrate that i'm going to take a simple plane here and i'm going to add a new material here stand surface and i'm going to attach a simple rgb here and uh, let's select the rgb there is it yeah ramp rgb i'm going to make this circular and as you can see we have two colors so if i turn on my ipr here all right so i mean we get something like this so the overall value on this is kind of inverted here so i'm going to make this something like this so this is the overall drop off does so you get more stronger value in the middle and as it goes in the positive direction you can see the overall radialness going on the overall gradient which means the value is going from one to zero so that means more effect will be on the middle the more strength will be applied on the middle and less on the as it goes to the black side so this is the overall drop off that you get from the drop off menu that we have been we are using right now so this is what we get so i'm going to delete this we don't need it anymore so i'm going to go to my constraint over here it's really hard to select this constraint i'm going to select this and the value has been set to two so let's preview this now and now you can see something going on so since we have let in go on the overall in the middle part the most strength has been applied towards that and we'll see some wrinkliness going on i'm going to increase some wrinkliness by simply adding some bend and we can increase this by simply going a value higher like a 40 and we can play this now and we see some flickering going on and we see some wrinklings coming out of it and you can do also one thing you can simply go to your cloth here and you can change this to something like a burlap or any preset that you want 
and now we have something like this so one thing you'll notice is that these guides are kind of helping you out in showing how the overall constraint is working how the overall motion drag is working how the bend is kind of working on the overall plane here so we get this kind of wrinklingness in the middle going on so if you want the overall cloth to go down you can pretty much use the constraint on the negative direction and then you'll have something like this so you can see the overall guides going on the bottom part so i'm going to keep it on the top i think and now i'm going to turn this off display so i don't think we need it anymore and now we are going to play this all right so this looks pretty good and i think i'm going to pause this here and let's hit three on my keyboard and now we get something like this so if i go to my ipr all right so you get something like this pretty interesting cloth here So you can do some animation kind of thing as you can see the overall animation is pretty slow so you can gradually add that kind of animation that a cloth has been moving so this is a pretty interesting thing that you can do you can play around with the overall cloth here and if you want you can do some extra stuff you can maybe add a bit of more force towards this so i can select my constraint here by selecting this constraint as well and i'm going to increase a bit more force like 1.5 value and you can see some more deformation going on and maybe uh, adding a value and you can see some craziness going on on the overall cloth here because the overall force is a bit too much on this so i think the overall one value is good enough for me you can also add a bit of strength to the overall bend here and you can play around with this so play around with different kinds of primitive what kind of result you can come up with this was a pretty interesting look and you can pretty much animate this since this is a pretty slow moving animation you can create this deforming or you can say morphing cloth so this looks pretty nice and play around with this and if you're going to cast this make sure you add more subdivisions to the cloth and if you add some more subdivision to the cloth you have to get rid of the constraint because right now the constraint is treating these polygons on the number of vertices it has already so if i go to something like if i select my plane and increase the plane to something like a 50 and 50 and go back this should work and if it doesn't you have to delete the plane because it kind of works on the same way i think it should work if it doesn't like for example if i have a kind of a torus here i can make this end cloth and if i go to my paint brush here i can select these points here and i can make this as a terrible surface so i'm going to go to my first frame and it comes now and i think we have to do that again and i'm going to make this end constraint again and so we get something like this point but if i increase the overall points on this torus here you see that the overall constraint has been disappeared from this and the reason is because the polygons has been shifted so if your constraint is not working you have to kind of redo the whole thing but as i said if it does work you can play around with it but i don't think creating this kind of uh, scene shouldn't be a problem because this was a pretty straightforward setup all we had to do was create some motion drag some drop off and some force and bend and that's it so this will be pretty easy to do and uh, the overall look is pretty interesting so have fun with this play around with this and you can create some amazing stuff with this and if you do create something out of it let me know i'll be happy to see your work and i'll see you in the next one